Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His mercy endures forever. Hear the commandments of God to his people. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of bondage. You shall have no other gods but me. Amen. You shall not make for yourself any idol. Amen. You shall not invoke with malice the name of the Lord your God. Amen. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Amen. Honor your father and your mother. Amen. You shall not commit murder. Amen. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. Amen. Lord, you shall not be a false witness. Amen. Lord, you shall not covet anything that belongs to your neighbor. Amen. Lord, Jesus said, the first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is the only Lord. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep you in eternal life. Amen. I invite you to stand as you are able and together let us sing the Trisagion. to have mercy. Be gracious to all who have gone astray from your ways and bring them again with penitent hearts and steadfast faith to embrace and hold fast the unchangeable truth of your word. Jesus Christ, your Son, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from Exodus. From the wilderness of Sin, the whole congregation of the Israelites journeyed by stages, as the Lord commanded. They camped at Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. The people quarreled with Moses and said, Give us water to drink. Moses said to them, Why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? But the people thirsted there for water, and the people complained against Moses and said, Why did you bring us out of Egypt to kill us and our children? and livestock with thirst? So Moses cried out to the Lord, 
What shall I do with this people? They are almost ready to stone me. The Lord said to Moses, Go on ahead of the people and take some of the elders of Israel with you. Take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile and go. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock of Horeb. Strike the rock and water will come out of it so that the people may drink. Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. He called the place Massa and Meribah because the Israelites quarreled and tested the Lord saying, is the Lord among us or not? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from Romans. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character and character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person, someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we were still, still were sinners, Christ died for us. Much more surely then, now that we have been justified by his blood, will we be saved through him from the wrath of God. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more surely, having been reconciled, will we be saved by his life. But more than that, we even boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. The word of the Lord.
the Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus came to a Samaritan city saw sick, called Sychar near the plot of the ground that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired out by his journey, was sitting by the well. It was about noon. A Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. His disciples had gone to the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask a drink of me, a woman of Samaria? Jews do not share things in common with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and, you would have, and he would have given you the living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have no bucket, and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our ancestor Jacob, who gave us the well, and his, son, his sons and flocks drank from it? Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again, but those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. The water that I will give will become in them a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I may never be thirsty or have to keep coming here to draw water. Jesus said to her, Go, call your husband and come back. The woman answered him, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You are right in saying, I have no husband, for you have had five husbands, and the one you have now is not your husband. What you have said is true. The woman said to him, Sir, I see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you say that the place where we must worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and now is here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father seeks such as these to worship Him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that the Messiah is coming, who is called Christ. When he comes, he will proclaim all things to us. Jesus said, I am he, the one who is speaking to you. Just then his disciples came. They were astonished that he was speaking with a woman, but no one said, what do you mean, or why are you speaking with her? And then the woman left her water jar and went back to the city. She said to the people, Come and see a man who told me everything I have ever done. He cannot be the Messiah, can he? They left the city and were on their way to him. Meanwhile, the disciples were urging him, Rabbi, eat something. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you do not know about. So the disciples said to one another, Surely no one has brought him something to eat. Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me to complete his work. Do you not say four months more, then comes the harvest? But I tell you, look around and see how the fields are ripe for harvesting. The reaper is already receiving wages and is gathering fruit for eternal life, so that the sower and reaper may rejoice together. For here the saying holds true, one sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap that for which you did not labor. Others have labored and you have entered into their labor." Many Samaritans from that city believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I have ever done. So when the Samaritans came to him, they asked him to stay with them, and he stayed there two days. And many more believed because of his word. They said to the woman, It is no longer because of what you said that we believe, for we have heard for ourselves, and we know that it is truly the Savior of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Please be seated. Jesus said, but I tell you, look around. See that the harvest is ripe for harvesting. Today, my friends, 
marks the halfway point of our long Lenten journey. We have 20 days behind us and 20 more to go, and we are entering into the most dangerous part of the run. Now, for those of you who are runners, especially distance runners, you know what I mean when I say this. All of those good distance runners know that when one enters into the space between halfway through the run and three quarters of the way done, you've traversed not only into the most dangerous part of the run, but perhaps the most difficult. Now, it might seem odd to suggest this, because at this point in your run, it's probably the point that you felt best all along. You see, your body's finally adjusted to this process and art of running. You've finally gotten into your cadence, a rhythm with your breathing, your steps, your pace, everything is on point. But this is dangerous because you begin to lose focus on all of those things. You see, you start feeling so good that you stop actively thinking about your form, about your pace, about your breathing, about your energy output, and before you know it, you're off the pace, falling behind. And if you get too far, behind, too far behind, of course, it's impossible to catch that runner in front of you or to attain that goal that you've set out for yourself to reach. Now, to combat this lack of focus, runners use mental tricks to keep their mind at bay. We like to call these things system checks, if you will. It's a way to actively think about your form about your breathing, about your pace, about your feet, about your legs, about your mind, about all of those things and how they're working together. But there's also little physical tricks that we like to use to keep our systems active and alive as well. Pick up the pace for just a few hundred meters. Slow the pace way down for 30 seconds. Take three or four big, deep breaths from your belly to get your breathing right back on track. Smile. Yes, smile in the middle of the run. Smiling is proven to help performance. Science has shown this. It helps release endorphins to take your focus off the pain and the effort that you're putting forth. And it helps you to visualize crossing that finish line. Speaking of the finish line, one of my favorite mental tricks, if you will, is to think about just that. To feel what it's going to be like to cross that line, to celebrate the success that you've put into accomplishing this big task of the run. Visualize that celebration dance. Jump up and down. Clap your hands a few times. Do whatever you need to do to celebrate success, even if you didn't meet the goal to 100% satisfaction. Today, my friends, we would do well to do a systems check, given that we're halfway through our Lenten season. And you smile about how far you've come so that the remaining 20 days don't seem so daunting. Can you take three or four big breaths from your belly, close your eyes, and visualize the celebration dance that you're going to do when the light breaks through the windows on Easter morning? How are you doing with your Lenten disciplines? How's your prayer life? How's that scripture study going? How are you returning back to the God of love so that God can work through you and for the world? Perhaps most importantly, how are your eyes being opened even more to the world around us, to the fields that are ripe for harvesting? Because at best, that's what these 40 days do for us. They open our eyes so that we can see so that we can become aware of the world around us and the need that exists within it to recognize the face of Jesus when he asks us for a drink of water at the well. Isn't it interesting that in our gospel text for today, it's Jesus who is the thirsty one and not us. Why do you think that is? How do you think the woman sitting next to him can quench that thirst? Or better yet, how can we quench that thirst? Perhaps even more intriguing is that the woman never gives Jesus the cup that he asks for. At least we don't hear about it in the text. She leaves it sitting by the well. In all of her excitement, she runs back to the city to tell the people about this mysterious man who asked her for a drink that she still doesn't fully recognize. He 
can this be the Messiah? She says with a question mark. And yet, she still extends that invitation to come and see. Come and see. Come and see a man who told me everything I have ever done. The text said, the people who heard her left and were on their way to him, and many in the city believed in him because of her testimony. Let me ask you this. If you were there, if you were listening to that testimony, would you believe? Would it have been enough for you to only hear, he told me everything I have ever done? What would you do if you heard that? Perhaps your curiosity would have been piqued enough for you to go and see the mysterious figure she was talking about, but would you believe? I'll be the first to admit that I'm not sure I would believe just from that. I think I would need more. Sometimes what is not written in the text is one of the things that we're called to pay attention to. It's one of the most important things to pay attention to. Think about what must be implicit in this text, in the woman's statement to the people as she's telling them about this man at the well. You see, presumably they knew about her life through no fault of her own, or uh, she had five husbands. She was living with a man who was not her husband, and she came to the well in the middle of the day so that she would not be seen by others in the world around her. She was an outcast of society. Others would have recognized that. What is more is that it's clear from her conversation with Jesus that she recognized something of brokenness within herself or the way she was living her life. I have to believe it was that brokenness that came across in her testimony as she was telling the people in the city about the man sitting next to her. Come and see this man. Come and see the man who knew everything about me, who knew everything that I have ever done, good, bad, and everything in between. Come and see the man who knew about my brokenness. Come and see him. He knew everything, and yet he loved me anyway. That's what's missing it's not written in the text for us this morning, but it's made to be so clear that he, Jesus, loved the woman, that he loved her anyway, that he loves us anyway. That would make me believe, wouldn't it make you? Knowing that the man who asks us for a drink at the well, he takes all of our brokenness, all of our pain, all of our worries, all of our sorrows. He loves us anyway even when we don't give him the drink that he asks for. That's something to write home about. That's part of what our system check helps us to realize halfway through this Lenten season. Are we feeling good at this point in our 40-day journey because we're doing everything right? We're doing out the things we set out to do, praying, fasting, reading Scripture, or are we feeling good because we've fallen back to those patterns of brokenness that we were living before the 40 days began? Even if we don't have the capacity to fill Jesus' literal cup, we do have the capacity to fill someone else's. The fields are ripe for harvesting. In just a few moments... You will notice that we will be praying together Eucharistic Prayer C, which is different than the Eucharistic prayer that we've prayed for the first two Sundays of Lent. Not only does this Eucharistic prayer help us to recognize our brokenness, but I think it calls us more clearly than any of the other prayers that we pray to open our eyes to the world around us, to open our eyes to the fields that are ripe for harvesting, that are in need of harvesting. As you listen and respond with those words of prayer, I want you to think about your Lenten systems check. How are you doing with your disciplines? How is your life of prayer? Your life of fasting? Your life of scripture study? Are you returning back to the God of love so that God can work through you? Are your eyes being opened even more to the fields that are ripe for harvesting? Can you love your neighbor more fully? Even if you knew everything that was broken about them, do you have the capacity, like Jesus, to love them anyway? To fill their cup? That's the work Jesus is calling us to do. 
That's the harvest that's ripe for the taking. Amen. And together, let us confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and His kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, He is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please join me in the prayers of the people responding at the end of each petition, as noted in your bulletin. Let us pray for the church and for the world. God of love, we pray for your church, for Michael, our presiding bishop, Susan, our bishop, for all lay and ordained ministers, and for all who seek you in the community of the faithful. Equip us with compassion and love to carry out your work of reconciliation in the world. God of love, God of freedom, we pray for our nation and all the nations of the world, for peace and unity across barriers of language, color, and creed, for elected and appointed leaders that they would serve the common good, Inspire all people with courage to speak out against hatred, to actively resist evil. Unite the human family in bonds of love. God of freedom. God of justice, we pray for the earth, your creation entrusted to our care. For the animals and birds, the mountains and oceans, and all parts of your creation that have no voice of their own. Stir up in us a thirst for justice that protects the earth and all its resources, that we may leave to our children's children the legacy of beauty and abundance that you have given us. God of justice. God of peace, we pray for this community, for our local leaders, for our schools and markets, for our neighborhoods and workplaces. Kindle in every heart a desire for equality, respect, and opportunity for all. 
Give us courage to strive for justice and peace among all people, beginning here at home. God of peace, God of mercy, we pray for all in any kind of need or trouble, for those whose lives are closely linked with ours and those connected to us as part of the human family, for refugees and prisoners, for the sick and suffering, the lonely and despairing, for those facing violence, for all held down by prejudice or injustice. Awaken in us compassion and humility of spirit as we seek and serve Christ in all persons. On this day, we pray especially for Aaron Cheetah, Tony Scarpelli, Lauren Ludy, Carol Rohr, Colin, Peggy Powell, and any others we lift up at this time. God of mercy, God of grace, we pray for those who have died, for the faithful in every generation who have worked for justice, for prophets who called us to racial reconciliation, for martyrs who died because of hatred, and for all the communion of saints. Make us faithful to your call to proclaim your good news by word and example and bring us at last into the glorious company of the saints in light. On this day, we pray especially for the Reverend Josephine Taylor, Orville Warren Redhair, and Linus Ellis. God of grace. Hear our prayers, holy God. Breathe your spirit over us and all the earth, that barriers would crumble and divisions cease. Make us more fully your co-healers of the broken world. Unite us with all people in bonds of love, that the whole earth and all its people may be at peace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Sisters, my brothers, my friends in Christ, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Um, after I say the offer for the sentence, yep. Good morning, everyone. You made it here on time. You should give yourself a round of applause. <laughs> a special welcome to any guests and visitors that we have this morning. Thank you for being here with Grace. Uh, our vestry person of the day is Matt Chamberlain. Where's Matt? There he is. He's raising his hand. If you have any thoughts or pastoral concerns after the service, um, please let Matt know and he'll let me and the vestry know. And if you're a newcomer, please find Matt too so we can learn more about who you are and how we can serve you. Just a couple of quick announcements to make. Um, the first of which is, remember tomorrow evening is our last time this year that we will be participating with uh, people offering resources together, Port, the hypothermia shelter, it's the last one Grace is doing for this winter season. So I think there's a couple of signups left for the early morning shift. If you've never done Port before, I really encourage you to sign up. It's really a wonderful opportunity where we can build relationships with others in our community and really see the needs of the world around us. There's a sign up right outside, so uh, I think we're good on food. It's just a couple of the volunteer slots are left. And then the last announcement, um, the eight o'clockers were really keen on this apparently, but 
Um, there's a few bags of eggs left in the blue bin outside. They're Easter eggs that are in need of stuffing uh, with candy for our kids on Easter morning. We will be doing the Easter egg hunt between the 9 o'clock and the 11 o'clock services Easter morning. Um, and if you're so inclined to fill some eggs with um, new candy, wrapped candy, I should add, um, please take a, take a bag home. And if you've got some um, leftover eggs that are already stuffed, bring them here. Bring them, just bring them back before Easter and we'll stockpile them and then um, get them hidden for our wonderful hunt. Um, our Thanksgiving basket this month is going to the Newport News Green Foundation, which mission is to um, support, sustain, and create more green spaces in Newport News and beyond. Uh, our beloved community is actually working on getting a speaker from the foundation here to talk about a cool project they're doing that benefits people beyond Newport News. Um, we're going to give you more information as we find out more about that, but I'm excited that that opportunity exists. Um, and without further ado, Andrew's going to bring around the basket, remembering that this first offering goes straightly, straight to our um, Newport News Green Foundation. I'm thankful we don't have to set the cops ahead for another year. And one more quick announcement. Um, we have a robust coffee hour today, um, both thanks to um, the leftovers that were from a vestry retreat yesterday and to the folks who volunteered to help set it up today. So make sure you head on over for a cup of coffee and maybe a small sandwich. You don't even have to get lunch today. So um, make sure you head over there. And uh, I said at the 8 o'clock service, and I'll say it again, I am thankful today for the vestry, the new vestry at Grace, who uh, were, they were all elected last week, and we had a retreat yesterday, so they're hitting the ground running, and I'm just very thankful that they're serving Grace in that capacity. 
Saint, yes, a round of applause. St. Paul says, each of you should give as you've made up your mind, not reluctantly or under compulsion. For God loves a cheerful giver.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you forever At your command, all things came to be. The vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. By your will, we were From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Again and again you called us to return. Through prophets and sages you revealed your righteous law. In the fullness of time you sent your only Son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By His blood you reconciled us. By His wounds we are and therefore we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope to proclaim with them your glory and their unending hymn. So, Father, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit, now bring forth before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving, we celebrate his death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming. Lord God of our fathers, God of Abraham, Sarah, Isaac, and Rebekah, and Jacob, and Leah, and Rachel, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world around us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this Holy Communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great High Priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit your Church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
gifts of God, for the people of God, the holy things, for the holy ones. You may be seated.
As you are able, I invite you to stand or kneel and let us pray our post-communion prayer. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. My friends, remember that we have too little time to gladden the hearts of those who travel away with us. So be quick to be kind, make haste to love, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us sing out, my friends. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.